Hey, Eric Sider here, and it's already time to start seeds here in Sacramento. Our average last frost date being February 25th. Also, I'm gonna be trialing some new seed flats and trays this year. And if you're in need of permaculture t-shirts, new designs are being added all the time. So links for that will be below. All right, let's get into it. If you haven't seen my previous video where I go over a real easy way to find your planting dates for where you live, I will link to that video at the end. What do we have on the schedule for today? We have most of your culinary herbs, basil, oregano, thyme, if you're starting from seed, and then uh, all your brassicas, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, etc., and also the hot loving plants that need to spend a lot more time indoors. So tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and then also uh, things like onions, also time to go. Now, if you're new to gardening or just getting started, you might wonder if you should bother growing from seed or just buy plants at the store. I usually tell people who are new, just go with uh, buying some plants because there's a lot of variables involved in growing seeds. And as Bill Mollison said, start outside your back door, get a success and expand. You don't want to be discouraged growing seeds and then give up gardening. So I recommend starting with some plants, get a success, and then you can always start seeds the next year, or you can start off with both if you like. The advantages of seeds, of course, are cost one. You can get a lot of plants from a couple dollars worth of seeds. You're going to get a lot more options for varieties. And then eventually, once you're comfortable growing plants from seeds, then you can start saving your own seed. And therefore, you're going to get better adapted plants each year. So that's the ultimate goal, growing from seed and saving seed. You're gonna need a protected area to start your seeds, something uh, at least to keep uh, the frost or the freezing temperatures off. So if you don't have an outdoor greenhouse or protected uh, little plastic bubble of some sort, you're gonna need uh, an indoor area. Sunny window is usually not strong enough to uh, get seeds up and running. Uh, I mean, you can get them germinated, but they tend to get pretty leggy. Uh, they just get tall and spindly. So you're probably gonna need some sort of grow light. The LED ones now are pretty low energy wise. It's a pretty good solution. And you can have, uh, like I have four foot by eight foot space. You can grow a lot of plants. So this uh, season I'm trialing some new flats and new cell trays. These are all from a company called Bootstrap Farmer and they're out of Texas. All these are uh, made in the USA which is really nice. And they're all durable, heavy duty, meant to last multiple seasons, which also means they're a bit more expensive. Now this is not sponsored, um, just trying them out. And so far I like what I have. So I got uh, these, uh, these are 1020 trays, which are just a kind of industry standard, more or less 10 inches by 20 inches. So you'll find if you, uh, whatever format you go with, you want to stick with it because that way all your stuff will work together. So this is the deep tray and uh, they're nice and sturdy. And these, what's nice about this, they allowed you to water from the bottom. And I'm trialing these guys. These are little six cell inserts and they got these little slits on the sides, which uh, allow for some root pruning. So once, so instead of the roots circling around and uh, inhibiting growth, the roots find the end once they hit the air, they stop and uh, grow new roots. And they also have the nice hole so you can pop them out. So these are really good because 12 of these fit in a 1020 tray, which gives you 72 total cells. So a lot of times in a small space, you're not going to be growing a whole flat worth of one variety. So these give you the opportunity to have multiple plants all in a small space, and particularly if they're growing at different rates. So these might be ready to go in the garden. And so all you got to bring out is this instead of having to bring a whole tray. So that's good. The only one thing I'd say is the depth isn't ideal. If you follow uh, John Jevons, which uh, a book I've talked about before, this is a really great book to get into once you're feeling confident. Um, but their system is uh, flats that are three inches deep. And also they have uh, 
longer lived plants in six inch deep pots, but they grow for a lot longer in there. So these are pretty good. They're about two, just over two inches. So for the most part, they will do the job. So we got nice heavy duty trays, nice cell trays. And then this is a, I'm trying this one. So this is their premier air pruning tray. This is more or less supposed to mimic soil blocks. So it's a method where you use a particular mixture of soil and a, and a mold, and you actually have a, a containerless block for your grow to plants in, which uh, work really well, but they can be a bit time consuming and tedious. So this uh, tends to be a little more user friendly. So th what this allows is they got the slits on the sides for the roots, and then it allows air to circulate around. So these are not cheap. They're about 16, 17 bucks for one. So if this is something you really like and you're doing in bulk. You probably need to buy several to get the price down, but I just wanted to give it a try and see how it compares. And these also fit in the 1020 trays so you can water from the bottom here. And then I also got the, uh, these multi-cell trays. So this is a 128 and a 200 cell tray. So these are gonna be, if you're growing a, ver a, a lot of one plant that doesn't need to spend much time in the trays because these uh, aren't gonna be able to stay in here very long, but I'm gonna try these for something like onions. Or if you're gonna do another option is if you're, if you wanna grow a lot of variety of different plants and then transplant these out into larger pots. So particularly this would be handy for if you only have a very small space and you want to get a lot of different seeds going, you can use this once they, once they show a, a set of true leaves, then it's time to transplant out of here. Again, these are all pretty sturdy and uh, meant to last multiple, multiple seasons. The other benefit to using these um, smaller cell trays is you need a lot less potting mix or compost if you're making your own. So uh, four inch pots are great, easy. You can leave uh, most of your plants in there until they're ready to go in the garden, but one four inch pots take up a lot of space and they require a fair amount of potting mix. So that's the other advantage of starting in the small trays, less material. And also uh, for seed starting, these are kind of handy, just a little plastic dome that fits right on top, keeps the humidity in, particularly for germination. Uh, I will say you want to be careful it doesn't get too moist in there and start growing mold, but this is not from Bootstrap Farmer. This is just a cheapy one from the garden center. But I just have one just to see how much of a difference it makes versus not having one. Always, always testing, always trialing. All right, so get out there and garden. If all you got is uh, big box store plants, give it a try. If you're new, start with plants, work up to growing seed, the ultimate being growing from seed, saving seed, and uh, you're off and running into self-reliance and sustainability. If you want uh, some really great conversation starting permaculture shirts links for that will be below and also if you're in need of permaculture consultation or design or you want to get a uh, plan together for a new property all the links for that will be below all right thanks so much for watching and i will see you next time